Black Management Forum has slammed the appointment of Nico Brzeiden out as chief executive officer of state-owned low-cost carrier Mango Airlines. The BMF says the appointment of what it terms a white male matriculant, end quote, was outrageous. The organization says it plans to challenge the appointment. Andile Nomlala is the president of the BMF and joins us in the studio. Andile, thank you so much uh, for coming in. Now, some people would say, why do you say he's not qualified? This man was the founding CEO of Mango Airlines all this years ago. It will be easy to bring him on board. You won't have to introduce him to people. He knows how the systems works. Why does the BMF say that this was a bad appointment? Let me start by greeting you, Marcel, and, and your viewers. Look, it, it's, this is a very basic call, is that uh, for the first time in history of state-owned enterprises, you find uh, a CEO's uh, advertising spec saying that a metric is the minimum requirement. All senior positions in government needs a degree at the very, at the very minimum, but that's not the issue. The other issue is that the gentleman uh, in question, which is Nico, has signed off two financial statements in 2011 and 2012 that misrepresented his own qualifications. Now you know that in South Africa in 2014 to 2016, we had an uproar of qualification misrepresentations, which he also fell foul of. And so therefore we are quite surprised that why would you bring a person who obviously his integrity and ethical standing is in question to lead an organization of Mango's uh, 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 size? Now, uh, we've, uh, when somebody's appointed to any position, whether it's the CEO or somebody who's going to come in um, and clean uh, the desk, as it were, um, more and more uh, we know from an HR point of view, uh, fingers are pointed at how that job was advertised. The BMF also has an issue with how this job for the CEO position has, was advertised as well. Why so? No, look, uh, the, the sad thing, Marcel, is that you could just tell that this, uh, the advertisement, there were two advertisements that went out, and the other, the initial advertisement, required that a person must have a degree. And eight months later, then another advert went out which required the metric. So for us, it's almost a foregone conclusion that there was something that was done behind the scenes to make sure that the position suit the person of Nico's caliber. By the way, we're quite surprised. Nico was implicated in qualification fraud many years ago, I mean, 2014. Mm -hmm. He should by now have qualified for himself. But he hasn't done that. So the arrogancy and, I mean, you could sense the level of supremacy because if you're talking a grade 12 for a CEO position and nowhere else in the country you find that, we had had people of high quality caliber, if you want to talk about the experience, whose integrity is in question. So we are not questioning whether he's capable or not. We are questioning the ethical standing by virtue of him fraudulently, knowingly, signing off financial statements that misrepresent his qualifications. So if in this, a, in this day and age of the new dawn, and we are talking about clean up, and yet we still bring questionable characters mm -hmm. into positions of responsibility, it therefore tells you that we are going backwards instead of moving forward. Now, for those making the appointment, one assuming here, yeah, South African Airways, because Mango is a subsidiary of theirs, um, they said uh, Nico Bosset denotes experience within the organization, spoke for itself, and now it seems they're pointing to the fact that when he left Mango, he joined FastJet in 2016, and during that time, he's now gained experience in important markets in the rest of Africa, Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe. What do you know, outside of the issues you have around the ethics or around around his qualification that you believe um, uh, he was uh, not upfront about. What have you uh, been able to find out about what he was able to achieve in, with the job at hand as CEO? Uh, look, uh, Marcel, if we were to start now ignoring the ethical standing of people, then I can tell you that we might as well go and call Brian Molefe to become a CEO of ESCOM because he indeed did do a great job at ESCOM, but the issue with him is that he's implicated in wrong things. Mm. And we can't build a nation, particularly post the state capture era, we can't build a nation, we can't clean up with same typical questionable characters. If we do that, then it means that we've got to open a can of worms. This gentleman, I'm quite disappointed to the board of SAA, by the way, and I've communicated that to some of their members. We have sent them a letter 
to say that we are quite disappointed to even dare consider a character of questionable ethical standing for a, suitable, for a position of this nature. His suitability or not doesn't materialize because there are many suitable characters who just don't have the required and the requisite ethical standing to lead an organization. Uh, Mr. Bezende with himself is no uh, different. He's typically of a fraudster, of qualification fraudster that is now resurrecting post a state capture era whilst we are supposed to bring in credible and quite commendable and skilled people into this, into this position. So for us, we're not going to back down. We have written to Parliament. We want them to do the same similar probe that they did with uh, Ms. Ellen Chavalala, who was a chairwoman of SAPC. Mm. They must do that probe to prove that is there any prudence in this gentleman's ethical standing to lead a state-owned enterprise? And if we sleep on that, it means that our country is going to go back to the state capture era. Okay. Thank you so much, Andile Nomlala. He's the president of the BMF. Andile, thank you so much for coming through to give us your view uh, on this issue.